So far we have looked at the comparison operators and the logic operators, but we have other operators. Let's begin with the in operator. With the in operator, it tests for membership. It evaluates to true if a value exists in the specified items of the list. For instance, we need to know those employees whose first name is Sarah, John, or Peter. We can see that we, we include the items we need in the bracket. We say, stipulate the in, then we open the bracket and we include all the items we need to be returned in this bracket. We can separate the items using a comma, just like we did with the any operator and the all. So, what this query will do. It will return all employees whose first names either Sarah, John, or Peter. When we run this, we run this. Indeed, these are the names stipulated in the in. We need to exclude some data items from the return data. We use the not in. So we use the in to include them to only bring to only return those items we are interested in, and then we exclude using the not in operator. So if I need employees whose names is not Sarah, John, or Peter, I will use the not in operator. Let's just modify this from in to not in. Now run this. Indeed, I get other employees whose first name is not Sarah, John, or Peter. Apart from the in and not in, we also have the is null and is not null. These two are used when you're filtering for null values. For instance, I may need to see only those employees who do not earn a commission. To do that, I'll use the is null for commission percentage column. When you see this query, have the first name, last name, then the commission percentage from employees table where the commission is null is null will be used to return only those employees who do not earn a commission is null means is nothing there is nothing in this column so when you run this you can easily see that only those employees who do not earn a commission are the ones returned then if i need to see those who earn a commission only I will use the opposite of is null. The is opposite of is null is is not null. So is not null will be used to return only those employees who earn a commission. And modify this to return only those employees who earn a commission. So we just say where the commission is not null meaning where the commission has some value it is not empty so when you run this you can see that we have 35 employees who earn a commission so this is how we can filter for either null values or not null values we also have another operator called the between the between operator is used to test for the range for instance, I need to know those employees who earn between 2000 and 5000 at their salary. To get that done, we shall stipulate this in the where clause, where the salary between 2000 and 5000. And when we run this, you can see that these are the employees whose salary is between 2000 and 5000. So the between is used to test for the range. Any employee whose salary is outside this range will not be returned. Next, let's look at the like operator. The like operator is used when you are pattern matching. The like operator powers our phone book, that phone book app on your phone. When you are searching for any contact to call, for instance, I need to call John. I will go to the search bar, type in a J. A J will return only names starting with letter J. Let's see how it operates. I need to get employees whose first name starts with a P. To do that, I'll run this query. The first name, last name, from employees where first name, like, we open quotes because this is a string. We are searching for strings. A string means letters. 
uh, the names are stored in the names are stored in letters so we are going to use like operator open single call so we bring in the capital p meaning the name it should start with the capital p followed by any other character a percentage in pattern matching is used to represent any other character it is we can see that we have names that only start with letter p we can also look at those employees whose first name is only two characters can we achieve that using an underscore an underscore is a word card just like a percentage percentage and an underscore a word card when we are pattern matching for percentage it means any other character but for an underscore it means a single character so we need those employees whose first name is only two characters so the first underscore is representing the first character and then the second underscore is representing another character so we have two underscores meaning these are two characters a name the first name should have only two characters when you run this we can see that we have two names kg and tj olson we may also look at employees whose second letter in the first name is an e shall say since an underscore represents the first character it represents one character we mean that it means that this first underscore is only representing the first character then the second character will be an e followed by any other character what this pattern will do it will return any character but it should be one character then the second character will be an e followed by any other character when you run this you can indeed see that these are the people whose second letter in their first name is letter e finally about the like what we should know is data in the database is case sensitive for instance we have run this previous query and it has worked it has returned some sample data because we stipulated that if this is a small e and names were in small e but let's try to change this to a capital e when we run this you see that we get no results why data in the database is case sensitive the second character is in small letters it is lower case but this one was upper case so the two do not match and when we change this and we reverse it again to small e we can see that results are now back finally let's look at the distinct operator the distinct operator returns unique values it eliminates the duplicates uniqueness is measured basing on a row rather than a column for instance in the first name column we have many peters peter but uniqueness will be measured basing on a row a complete row we have peter hall we have peter tucker we have peter vargas these are three different people because of a row but if we had another peter vargas and we need uniqueness it will return only a single peter vargas let's try to get some department id we want to see department ids when you run department ids you can see that we have a lot of duplicates then fifty you see you can see that there are a lot of duplicates now if i need to see unique values unique department ids in this table of employees i will use the distinct keyword or the unique keyword the distinct keyword comes before the column we want unique values to be returned so we say distinct then the department id when you run you can see that now we have unique values being returned unique values are now returned so that is how we ensure uniqueness when we are returning data in summary 
When you are limiting the 3D data, we use the WHERE clause. The WHERE clause is always accompanied with a condition, and only data matching that specified condition is returned. In the WHERE clause, we use different operators like the comparison operators, the logic operators, and other operators, like you've looked at them. In the next section, we are going to look at functions and how they operate.